Okay, today what we're going to do is work with a series of graphic images to show a different approach to building a collection. Uh, the source files we're going to use are on the course website in the um, content area, and it's one called Images. So I can right-click on this and um, save the link as and download it to my machine. So I've done that, and what I'm going to do now is uh, create a collection. So I've created a new collection and here are the downloaded ones I've extracted from the zip. So I'm going to highlight all those. I'm going to go off to the gather tab, highlight all these and drag them into the collection. So I have a, a bunch of image files in here. You notice they're all JPEGs. They could be PNGs, they could be GIFs. Doesn't matter. Uh, Greenstone can import them all. So what I'm going to do, and I've got them all in, I'm going to make a few changes to my collection. First, search indexes. So if I click on design and then click on search indexes, the full text search index. We must delete this because images have no text. So there will be nothing come from any search. So every, all search results will be zero. So I'm going to remove that index. We don't need a search on the file name. I'll remove that. In fact, we may not want a search on the title one. Um, I'll remove that as well for now. Uh, partition or browsing classifiers. We don't need a index for file name, so I'll remove that. I'll keep the title one for now. Okay, so we have a title index. All the rest is done. Let's create and build it and see what we get. Now, what we'll have is the default um, view uh, for images. Uh, the images will be processed by a plugin called Image Plugin and it will make certain decisions. We can change those. In fact, we will change some of them a little bit later. Okay, the build is complete. So when I preview the collection, what do we see? Uh, here's the titles index. Here's all our images. This is the thumbnail of the image. If you click on the thumbnail, it takes you to these larger image. That one's not all that larger. Some of these are bigger. This one's a little bit bigger, and some of them are quite large. Uh, this is the Greenstone converted text of the document. Now, this document or file has no text. So what do we see? This document has no text. Uh, we also get the usual default format of the title and the file name. Now one thing about these thumbnails, they're a little small, particularly for pictures. You would think the user would like to see the picture and say, oh, that's what I want. You can make them bigger though. You make them bigger here in the design tab for the document plugins. I said that uh, images are processed by image plugin. So I'm going to double click image plugin and take a look at some of the options. What are the options? Well, we maybe want the thumbnails to be a bit bigger. Right now they're only 100 pixels in size. I'm going to change that to 200 pixels in size. Uh, anything else, <coughs> excuse me, is probably fine. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to rebuild this. OK, it's been built. Now, here's what we had before. The small thumbnails by default. I've changed it, so let's refresh it and we'll see the new larger thumbnails. A lot easier for the user to see what's going on. So these are 200 pixel thumbnails. A lot better. Okay, the next thing I've done is to add some metadata, some DC uh, elements. So um, I'm going to leave the title alone because I've got EX title, it's fine. So I've added uh, some authorship uh, information. This basically is going to be, be the photographer index. So the photographer index will be based on DC Creator. I've added a description uh, there for each one. And we've added uh, a location index, which will be based on DC Publisher. Now these are going to be AZ compact list indexes. So we want to build those. And we're also going to build a search index that's going to be based on mainly DC description. So first let's do the search index. We click the design and then search indexes. We can add a new index. So we're going to click on new index here. And it says what's it going to be based on? We don't want the full text because there is none. We're going to base it on DC description and EX title, I would think, because we do have extracted titles. Uh, EX title. Title. There we are. I click add index. 
Now one problem with using multiple uh, metadata elements for a search is the search name becomes <laughs> kind of strange. So we click on format search and we're going to change what the user sees over here. So instead of uh, display spec to DC description, we're going to say search words or keywords. Let's call it that. Okay, now let's make our browsing indexes. So I'm going to click on design Browsing classifiers is what we got now. So in the uh, pull down menu from select classifier to add, we're going to choose A to Z compact list because this will be used for our photographer, for example. So we click add classifier. We don't want it on DC title. We want it to go against uh, DC creator. And we're going to call it change the button name down here to photographer. Photographer. Oops. And click OK. Our next index is also going to be AZ compact list, so we can click add classifier. Um, this will be our location index. We want to know where the picture was taken, and that was based on the metadata that we put in DC Publisher. And we're going to change the label for that to be location. Click OK. And we have one more. We're going to make a description index. Now, we don't actually, not going to build an index for description. Why? Not really useful as a browsable one. We're going to use that as a searchable one. Plus, we'll display the description in the indexes here. So now, let's build. Okay, our build is complete. Here's our new one. We have a search box back. You notice it says searching keywords. That's the description we used. We have our titles indexes, which is pretty well the same as we saw earlier. We have a photographer index, A to Z compact list. And we have, uh, see what ones Marilyn Perkins has taken. We have a location index right down here. Now, um, search box is interesting. Notice this one. Uh, if I search for cat, which I've done, you notice two documents match the query. This one is cat is in the title. This one, cat is not in the title, but it's in DC descriptor. So both are cats family. So that is a fairly useful uh, search engine here. Now, if, what if I search CA? You notice nothing shows up by default. So it's not uh, using truncation. We'll cover that stuff a little bit later. So things are working, but our display is a bit of a problem. So next, let's format the display. We have to format the display for search results as well as titles. And then we have to do photographer and thing. Now, basically, search results are a similar to the list that is used by titles. So these will be formatted pretty well the same way. Formatting is done in the format, format features, and you can choose which feature you want uh, from the choose feature parts. So there's our indexes, index one, two, and three. But if we scroll down, we'll see there's also one for search. So, and this uses the default format. So if we click add format, we can now change the format for this. So I'm going to delete what's in there and modify it. Now here's how I'm going to modify it. The first column contains the greenstone converted icon. Perhaps I don't want that, so I'm going to take that out. I'm going to delete that first row. The second row contains uh, the link to either the thumbnail icon or the source file. Now this is more complex than I need because we only have images in this collection. So I'm going to remove the squiggly brackets and I don't need to have these one for the source icon after the comma. So what I'm going to have is ex source link. That's the greenstone command to make a hyperlink to the original file. And it's going to show the thumbnail icon and link to it. And then what do we have? Well, we have a whole bunch of code down here that says uh, use DC title if you've got it or ex title. So the second column, we probably don't need that. So I'm going to get rid of highlight. And we don't need an or as well because we don't have any of this stuff. We don't have DC titles. We know that all our things have EX titles. So we'll simplify. So we're in the second column. We're going to display uh, basically the title of the thing. There. Now, 
obviously well, that will work, but it's probably less information than we want. Let's take a look at it. We can go back to our web browser uh, and refresh, I would think, or do our search again. There, see? So there's the hyperlink. You know, it's hyperlink to the full, and there's the title. Um, so we've got rid of the other stuff, but not quite perfect. It's good enough. It shows you how to do it. But what we would want to do really is add more metadata here. So ex title, maybe let's put a carriage return in and we might want to display something like um, DC creator, C-R-E-A-T-O-R, C-R-E-A, something like that. And maybe a carriage return of BR in and then and then let's say a DC uh, publisher, which is the location. Okay, if we put something like that in, go back and refresh, we've got a bit more information. Now, what we should do is say what this information is. This is the title, this is the photographer, this is where it was taken, and we could have a description uh, displayed underneath that. Actually, let's put that in. Uh, and then we want to or BR, and we've got DC, DC description. Okay, so there it is down there. Now, go back, refresh. There. Now, we can make this look a lot nicer later, but that gives you an idea of what we can do for the search results. Now, we don't actually even have to have it in this format. We could actually get a little tricky here. Watch this. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is make a custom search results, uh, and search results are basically a straight list type index. What I'm going to do is lay it out by using a table, a simple trick, and I'll make my table how wide? 70% of the, 70? 70% is probably good, 70% of the screen size, and I'm going to put quite a bit of cell padding between now uh, and the cells, 9 pixels, I think. Now, let's going to make our first row of the table. And let's give it a color, background color. E.g., uh, what color? Maybe a light sort of gray, light slate gray kind of thing. If I remember my codes, that's hex code CCC. I'll show you where to get that information a little bit later. Uh, that's our row. Now, we're going to need our column. Our first column is going to contain the information. So. align it to the top the column and let's give it a little nicer font so I'm going to add an inline style so the style I'm going to have is font family uh, colon Verdana nice screen font semicolon quote there so that adds a little for a color or a little style to our uh, column now, what information should we display? Let's put a bolded, and maybe people want to know what the picture title is. Picture title. And then we're going to say picture title is from EX title, right? It's title, and then let's put a whoop, blank line in. Then what do we have? Now I'm spacing this stuff over, not for Greenstone, because HTML is going to ignore all this, but just to make it easier for me to spot mistakes. Uh, after the title, people probably want to know who the photographer of the picture is. So let's put that in. This is bold. Photographer is stored in DC Creator. Uh, PR. Uh, and then we probably want something such as where it was taken, location, and that was stored in, oops, I have under bold there, location was stored in DC Publisher. And put a blank line, BR, okay. And then finally we probably want to display the description. So we're not going to bold that. You don't want to bold because it's really a paragraph. So we're going to use a paragraph tag. DC. 
And we could add some other style, a paragraph. We could add first letter to make it indented, but that's good for, let's just do a slash paragraph tag to end that. Now we got to end that column slash TD and then start our second column, right? What's in our second column? TD, V align, let's uh, vertically align it to the top. And that's going to have in it the EX source link. There's the Greenstone hyperlink. It's going to be linked to something. Let's display the thumbnail icon. There we go. And EX period slash source link is the Greenstone command to end the hyperlink. Slash TD. And we got to end, oh, we're going to end our row slash tr and we have to end our table there we are now check my code over oh yeah typo check my code over it's hard to read in the little box this is why a lot of people will copy this out and put it into notepad or something where it's easier to read it or printing it out is actually the best uh, foolproof method of proofreading it. Okay, and then we go back and do a search and refresh the results. What will it look like? It's going to look like this. Okay. Ooh, not bad, eh? So that's our search results nicely formatted. Now we would have to do the same thing for titles. To format the titles, it's off to the GLI, Format, Format Features, and we can select from Choose Feature, uh, there's our title index, and it has the default one. So we're going to click Add Format, and we'll remove the existing format and replace it with our own. Okay, let's take a look at the title format. So I've gone to Format, Format Features, selected CL1, and I've deleted the existing. Now I'm going to create a two columns for display. So the first column, I'm going to align things to the top. The second column, which contains the picture, is going to be aligned so the second column is going to contain the data, which will be aligned to the middle. So the first column, the picture with the hyperlink. Now what I'm going to do here is put in uh, maybe a bit of white space around it. So I'm going to use a HTML command called span. that allows me to format a line. So I'm going to put some style. Span doesn't do anything except allow you to add some style to things. So uh, the style I'm going to add is uh, font family. Oops, no, no, so I'm not going to add the font family there. Like I'm later. The style is going to be uh, margin, right. I want a little space, white space around my picture. Three M spaces, the width of the letter M. Okay, that'll give me a little space around it. Then I'm going to put in the link, right? I'm going to link it. You notice the link is different than source link. Link goes to the document text level. And I'm going to display the thumbnail icon, thumb icon, and I'll have a slash link. So I'm not going to link to the larger picture. I'm going to go to the document text level. And I'll show you why later when we go to format that. Why we would want to go to document text instead of the full size picture. Okay, so that's going to format the first column. A little bit of white space, show me the picture. Do second column. I've got the TD down here, uh, lying to the middle, and this is where my span style is going to go in as well. And here I'm going to add a font. Oops, better spell it right. Font family, and I'll choose for data. Good for text data. Okay, there's our font family for data. Now, what are we going to display down here? Well, this is where the metadata is. So let's put a bold in, title, ITL, title, colon, slash bold. And that's going to be, of course, EX title, title of the picture. And a BR for a carriage return. Uh, then we'll display something like the photographer. Photographer. People want to be able to see the metadata to help them choose if it's the picture that they want. Uh, the DC Creator is where the photographer information is. Put a PR. Uh, and then we're displaying, let's say, maybe the location. Uh, where 
was it taken? And that was from DC Publisher, I think. See the problem of uh, Dublin Core being mainly for bibliographic data. This, some of the stuff's not very good fit. Uh, we really what we would do is change the metadata database to reflect that, but uh, we're not going to do that. What's something else someone might want to know? How big is this file? File size, right? Is it gigantic? Ah, where will we get that information? One of the things is, if you go here and say it says insert variable, click on this pull down. We know the normal stuff of uh, Dublin Core down there, but if you scroll down, you'll find there's the extracted stuff such as EX file size. This would tell us how big it is. There's some other ones down there as well uh, that are particular to images. For example, there's a thing called image size. See, image size there. We can put that in. It'll tell us how big it is. Uh, and if you scroll down, there's, if you're wor working with like, something for, for t professional photographers, there's a whole bunch of EXIF information. Look at this stuff, right? Uh, tons of things down there that might be of use to that particular audience. But not our audience. So let's do a BR. That's, oh, BR, that's fine. Uh, anything else we need? Uh, I won't bother putting the description right here. Now, I am going to add something. Well, actually, maybe I will put the description. But I'm going to do something else. I'm going to put a link. Now, our first column up here, we have linked the thumbnail. Right When someone clicks on it, that's a hyperlink. But how will people know that? Maybe we want to give them an option with a text hyperlink. So we're going to use the same thing, link to document text, um, view full record or something. Put that in. Uh, slash link. So this is going to be hyperlinked and when someone clicks on this text it will take them to the document text level. Uh, let's make a paragraph. Uh, but I'm concerned I'm running out of room because the description could be large and indexes don't have a lot of space so I'm going to change the font size to smaller. Make it smaller than the rest. Okay, P style, font size smaller, and then we're going to display DC, let's see, all right, DC description, and better end our paragraph tag down there. Oh, and we had started a span, we better end the span, we had started a column, better end the column. Okay, let's check it over, what should it look like? It should look something like this. Ooh. So what we have here is the thumbnail, hyperlinked as you can see. And that will take us to document text. There's nothing there right now. Bear with us, we will put stuff. The view part takes us to document text. And here's our description in small. So this works, except for document text has nothing. Ah, let's fix that. Now, to fix uh, what happens when someone clicks on a record, they go to document text. Document text consists of a number of things. The actual document text part down here. So you can double click it up here. And the format string is text. Let's delete that. So we want a blank one. We're going to put more later. But documents also have a default header. We don't want that either. Let's delete that. And they also have some buttons to detach and highlight buttons. We don't want that. Let's delete that. So we've got rid of document buttons and document heading and document text. Let's put some document text down there. So we're now going to put some format to display our record. Okay, I've deleted the existing format here. So I'm going to put my basically a full record display in the document text. So I'm going to center whatever I've got and I'm going to use a table to lay it out on the screen. Now I can make the width of the table a certain percentage, but I may not know how wide the page is. Uh, Greenstone will generate a variable for me called page width. I'll use that. I'm going to use single quotes, I think, around that one might be a little safer in this case. So table width is page width, whatever that's going to be. I'll put a border equal to one around it. Uh, and a cell padding, I'll make that nine pixels, and cell spacing. Got lots of white space. Got a whole page to work with. Equals uh, nine pixels. All right. Oops. Cell spacing equals nine pixels. Uh, the first row of my table is where the picture is going to go. 
So I'm going to give a nice bright background color. Ooh, yellow. Make it stick out. Uh, and in that column in the first row, uh, I probably want the picture aligned to the center, I think, of my table. It's going to go what? Well, there's going to be EX source link. I want to hyperlink it to the full size picture. I'm going to display the thumbnail of the picture and EX period slash source link. Right, so it's hyperlink. So I'm going to click on it and go somewhere. Now let's put a slash TD to end that column. So that's the picture going to be in my column on the first row. What's the second row going to consist of? Text. So let's give it a nicer background color. Let's go back to our light gray, which is CCC. And I'm that column. Let's give it a little bit of uh, style to the text. Uh, just a simple font. Family. data. How's that? Okay, there's our font for this. And then you would put in your metadata. So let's make bold. We got picture title slash bold. And that is from EX title is the metadata source for that. And we'll put a carriage return a bold uh, for probably the photographer. Let's bold him. And the photographer was held in, e whoops, sorry, DC creator. Put on that. Uh, let's display what else we got to the location. I want to know where the picture was taken. Bold, and that was in DC publisher. And finally, let's make a paragraph with DC description. Um, I'm also going to put a link because, again, people don't know the picture is clickable. So uh, I may want a little space between. So there's a HTML code in uh, BSP semicolon to put a space in. And I'm going to put EX source link. So it'll be hyperlinked. I'm going to display the thumbnail, EX thumb icon, and EX period slash source link. Oh, actually, I don't want to display the thumb icon. I want to display a text one. Uh, view, for, view full picture. So someone will see that link and they can click on the text. So it's EX period slash source link. There. And slash paragraph to end our paragraph, slash td to end that column, slash tr to end that row in the table, slash table to close off our table tag, and slash center to close off our center tag. What's it going to look like? Well, let's go off and boom, there we are. So we've got the picture, beautiful yellow background. Someone clicks on it, there's the full size thing. We've also got a link down here, view full picture, they click on that, there's the full picture. Nice. Ooh, lemurs. There we are, there's our lemur one, click on the lemur. You notice this one is so large you can zoom in or out, right? So you can have really very large photographs in here. So now uh, things work. Someone actually clicks on something, Oh, that's our search one. We could have fixed that up. So if they get down to the document text level, things work for them. Now there's one problem with this. So you notice it's right up against the menu bar. We might want a little bit of white space up there. The secret is document heading. We had actually deleted this, um, but when I went in and put it back, what I've done is for each um, record, I put in a blank line but I made the line a lot bigger. I've given it a margin of nine M spaces. So two blank lines should get us something like this. You notice there's a lot more white space now, a little nicer for our record. So that's the basics of creating a 
image-based collection. What we're going to do next, part two, is look at formatting our other indexes.